Let's move on to our second sound strategy, spatial audio. This, as a reminder, is sound that is emitted from a source that grows louder as you approach. It's a bit like ambient audio, except you can't hear it when you're far away, and you can hear it increasingly more clearly as you approach, like in real life. In this scene we're exploring right now, the crackling of the fire, the chirping of birds in a tree, and the putter of an idling car are all examples of this. Let's give this a listen and see if we can pick this thing, these things out. To help hear things really clearly, I'm going to turn off my other ambient audio sources from the previous tutorial. I'm going to turn those off entirely by just clicking, unchecking the boxes beside them, so I only hear the spatial audio. And as I wander around the scene, as we explored previously, the fire gets louder, and some of these trees, kind of a whistly bird sound in that one. Okay, a different type of bird. Mr. Owl sound effect, and then the sound of the puttering car, and I think we have one more, the owl sound you heard previously over there. But notice, as I get further away from this car, it gets quieter, and maybe you can hear it in the YouTube video, hopefully you can, that as I turn my character to the left, I only hear the car in my left ear. In the center, I hear it in both, and on the right, I only hear it in the right ear. So it kind of mimics the way that our ears work in real life. It sounds growing in volume as we get close, decreasing as we go away, and being played in the proper ear as we turn and move around them. It's basically creating real-world sound. So, how do we do so? Well, let's take a look at some of the elements of our scene here to see if we can't figure out how this works. I'm going to click on this fire, and you'll see as I click on it, it's going to open up in the hierarchy and direct me right to where this campfire exists. And you can see that I already have an audio source attached to this. We're going to kind of learn how this works from the opposite direction as before. We don't build it from scratch. I'm going to analyze something that already exists and then kind of infer from it how it might work. So let's take a peek at some of the settings in here and see if we can't learn about how this is all working. Our audio source has a fire crackle sound that was selected from the selection of sounds I've already added. If you want your own sound, you'll have to add it into your project before you can choose it. I also have, in this place, in this situation, play on awake and loop selected. That's because this sound should always be playing, even if I can't hear it at that given time. Technically, we could trigger it on and off as we get closer, but that's kind of more work that we need to do. The thing that determines us hearing it or not is not whether or not it's playing, it's our uh, proximity to it. I'm going to leave all of these other settings in their initial state, including volume at max, because the volume is going to change in a different place, which is the 3D sound settings submenu. Here is where the really interesting stuff happens. I need to make sure that my spatial blend is set to 3D. I think in the previous section, this was automatically set to 2D. Whenever you build an audio source, this will be set to 2D. I need to crank this to 3D. Technically, you can kind of have a mix and match of these settings if you want to create kind of an intermediate blend. But for now, let's just either be 2D for ambient or 3D for spatial. This is the main difference maker. So our spatial blend is now set to 3D, which means that those things like hearing it in the left or the right ear will be active and the distance that we're away from it will also be in effect. Under our 3D sound settings, we see this little graph that shows the way that the sound is being heard. At the top, this is full volume, and at the bottom, this is silent. And on the left-hand side, this is super close, and on the right-hand side, this is further and further away. How far away? It depends on the max distance. Right now, this is 150 units in our game. How far away is that? Well, if I actually look at my scene with this object selected, I should be able to see a bit of a sphere. Can you see that kind of outline of a, of a blue circle? That shows the range with that, of which that sound is going to be heard before it reaches the very end of the sound. Now, technically, this one doesn't ever go fully silent. I can actually click on this and drag it to fully silent. I can edit any of these curves as I want to. So right now, when I reach about 150 units away, that sound will no longer be possibly heard outside there. It'll be fully silent. And as I get closer, it gets louder and louder before it gets quite loud as you get close. Why does it have this strange curve, you might wonder? Well, this is actually the way sound works in the real world. It gets exponentially louder as you get closer to things and falls off quite slowly as you move further away. It's called a logarithmic curve. And we can kind of see here that our volume roll-off, actually, well, I made it custom because I changed things, but the logarithmic roll-off is technically a more realistic way that sound works. However, 
we're making games, and we don't have to follow the real world if we don't want to. We can actually change it to a linear roll-off, which makes it so that sound decreases equally over time as you walk away from it. When you're close, it's the loudest. When you're, the, when you're far away, it's the quietest. And if ever in between, it, it kind of decreases regularly. Maybe you want your sound to work like that for some reason. It won't sound perfectly realistic, but maybe that's the effect that you want. You can feel free to have a logarithmic, linear, or custom one. Something I like to do sometimes in my custom roll-offs is just make sure that it gets to silent exactly where I want it. Uh, and I can do so by kind of clicking on these dots and dragging them or even adding new dots by double clicking and really customizing things. Technically, if you want to be really strange, you can make it so that as you get further away, it goes down. And then as you get really far away, it gets louder for a bit before going down. That would be a very unrealistic sound, but maybe for some reason that's the way you want it to work in your game to create a weird, eerie tone in like a, a thriller or a horror experience of some kind. I'll leave that up to you to explore. Right now, I'm going to leave it as basically the regular uh, logarithmic roll-off with a couple little tweaks. And I'm going to change my max distance by clicking on this gray space and dragging. I can shrink the distance and watch in my Unity scene view, if I kind of move up here, as I drag this lower, you'll see that range shrinking. This now means that the range the sound can be heard is much smaller than before, in case I don't want that fire to be heard from far away. I designed mine to have the fire to have quite a large range because the sound of the fire is, to me, a central part of the experience of this scene. I want that texture to be present pretty much everywhere that you are in the scene. But if I click on, for example, this tree over here, I believe this tree has a... or is it this one? No, it's this one. This one also has an audio source. Notice that it's the owl sound. It's set to 3D spatial blend. And I've chosen a linear roll-off for this one because I want it to be kind of loud incrementally as I get closer, but the zone that you can hear it is much smaller. I didn't want this owl to be heard from super far away, just to not overwhelm my scene with different sounds. Because if I made all of the sounds have a large distance, then you'll hear everything at once all the time, and that might be a little bit overwhelming to the player. So I decided to keep some of these individual sounds. Here's another one. This is my bird sound 2, I called it, and this one has my bird chirping sound. Their ranges, you have to get quite close to hear them in the first place. So you as the sound designer get to decide how bigger range these spatial audio sounds actually occur within. Maybe I'll shrink my uh, fire a little bit. I also have one on my vehicle. You can see that's the sound for it. Maybe I want the vehicle to not be quite so present, so I'm going to shrink the distance down a little bit. And there's some other settings you can play around with. I'll let you experiment with those if you're interested. But the result of this is, well, let's just see here. If I shrink this car one down and I shrink this fire one down, quite small, let's go into the experience and see if we notice the difference. Now I hear nothing upon entering. Before I heard the fire, but now the fire starts maybe around here. There it is, just ever so quiet. And you can see in my chart here, if I have the object selected, my campfire, that as I get closer, it shows me where I'm at in the sound. See how much louder it gets as I get closer? Let's actually get to the, to the peak value, interestingly enough. Maybe I can't actually get exactly to where it is. I think it's underground a little bit, interestingly enough. What if I go to my, uh, where is my, go to my scene view. Let's choose my owl and see this, just so we can really understand this well. That owl one is selected. You can see right now there's no information being played because I'm not close enough. But if I head towards the owl, as I get closer, you'll see it light up with that line as I approach it. There it is. And now I can just barely hear the owl, and as I get closer, the owl gets louder. And if I go inside this tree, right underneath where the owl is, it gets quite loud. And so it looks like the sound is centered in the leaf on the tree up right above, right about here. So there you go. There's some spatial audio stuff that's happening. Oh, my rotation is changing it too. Yeah, we have the ability to actually take sound, attach them the sound to things, and then choose the radius or the range in which the sound can be heard and the different volume levels that it's at by customizing the way this chart looks for the different volume levels and maybe by toggling some of the roll-off settings. Definitely spend some time playing around with this. You can use the spatial audio all over the place for different types of objects. Another scene where you'll see this taking place is a little bit inside of our house where I've already included some spatial audio sounds in different spots for you to explore. Uh, the editor it doesn't drop you in at a very good spot for the way this is built, but yeah, in the sound we have some things that have spatial audio, as well as one-shot audio, which I'll explore a bit in the next video. See you there.